I used to be a professor, like many other people, and one day I received a telephone call from Harvard saying, would you become the director of our library? I said to myself, here is a chance to make a difference, to do something instead of just to write books about things. Because the Harvard University Library is the largest university library in the world. We have nearly 14 million volumes. And my feeling is, how can we use this library as a way to organize the information society of the future? And that is my main ambition in the way I direct the Harvard University Library. The problem of preservation is something that haunts all directors of libraries, and we have not yet found an answer. I am deeply worried about the danger of losing digital texts because we have hardware and we have software that become obsolete. We have what we call metadata, that is cataloging information that also becomes obsolete. In digital texts, they are made up of ones and zeros in combinations. And these ones and zeros unravel. Therefore, they don't last. Books printed on paper do last. More books are produced in print each year than the year before. And soon we will have one million new titles every year. So the idea that the book is dead to me is absurd. However, I take seriously the fact that electronic books are the wave of the future. If you look at the history of communication, you will find that one medium does not displace another but they live together in a kind of cohabitation that is mutually beneficial. It's easy to say we must digitize our collection of books. It's very expensive. So Google comes to me and they say, we will digitize your books free and in exchange you will get what is called a library digital copy and uh, good luck to you. But we, Google, can do with our digital copy what we want to do. We can sell it. And so that means the commercialization of a collection of books that has been built up at great expense since 1638. So I think that I should not just give to Google all of these books for them to digitize, but rather in exchange to accept something, the democratization of knowledge. I want all of these books to be available free of charge everywhere in the world. And Google wants to say, no, we will charge money for subscribing to our database from these books. And I say, what will the price be? And Google says, we will determine the price. But don't worry, trust us. We need guarantees, we need conditions so that Google's vast database of millions of books will in fact be available to the general public. So I have refused to make Harvard's copyright books available to Google, public domain books, no problem. But copyright books, no, I don't think we should do that. I don't think that this cultural patrimony should be controlled by one company. We are having a conference at Harvard and we want to create a grand coalition of people who will pay for and create a national digital library as great as the Library of Congress, and that, in fact, it will be international, free of charge. Now, that may sound utopian, but I have found so much enthusiasm for this idea that I believe we can do it. So I'm a great believer in the Republic of Letters as an international world of knowledge, open to everyone, egalitarian, no police, 
no borders, no separate cultures, but a kind of cultural commons that is open to everyone in the world.